Hey guys, this is going to be a general video about how to climb in ranked and all the different questions that I've been asked on stream. I'm mostly going to be talking about broad concepts, but let's get into it. Uh, we're going to start with the basic one, which is what agent is easy to climb with in ranked and how many agents should I learn? People ask questions like, should I learn every agent? And my answer is definitely not, at least not at first. Don't overwhelm yourself and play every agent at a mediocre level. You really need a decent amount of time played with an agent to master them. This not only includes knowing the agent themselves, but knowing how they're used in specific comps and versus different comps, how to react in certain situations, um, what to do on both offense and defensive sides of every map, you know, etc. My advice is choose two to three agents to learn and get them to a confident and, you know, competent level of play. This not only gives you more options in case your main is picked and, you know, insta-locked by somebody else, but it also allows you to help fill the gaps in the team comp depending on what's needed. And in general, it's just better to have several options rather than just be like a one trick. Now, as far as what agents are good to climb ranked with, that's largely dependent on your own comfort and your playstyle. People immediately think of the duelists on the top of the scoreboard carrying the team, um, but every player and agent uh, has their own job on the team and you can be impactful on any agent. If you're an aggressive player and you like taking fights and entering and making space for your team, then you might be more comfortable playing on a duelist like Jed or Race. If you're a slower or more passive player, you might be more comfortable on an info agent or a sentinel, something like Cypher or Sova, who are typically played in a more support supportive, you know, passive style. Uh, if you like to use your abilities to set up teammates and, you know, be that sort of supportive role, sort of like an initiator, you could play someone like Breach, Omen, or Sky. These types of agents are usually good for people who are really communicative players or people that like to IGL in their ranked games because you have the ability set to do so. Please just understand the general role of your agent and what your job is on the team. Don't be the guy insta-locking Jet who is last alive every single round. This also doesn't mean that just because you're playing some agent like Sova or Cypher that you're allowed to bait all your team every round. In TAC FPS games, a lot of what should I do is contextual based on how the round is being played out. And this is largely part of what game sense is. So you just have to play more on your specific agent, be put in those situations many times, and build a foundation of decision making from that, basically. There's a lot of educational YouTube content out there on specific agents, and there's plenty of streams to watch if you want to learn some things before taking it into your ranked game and trying to apply it there. For this next one, I'm going to group some uh, questions together and just sort of answer them one by one. So the first one is, I have a great KD and I top frag every game, but I lose every game. Why? Or I get so tilted in ranked games, my teammates hold me back, what should I do? Understand that kills don't necessarily mean impact. You could be never helping your team on the opposite side of the map and be last alive every round, but get some kills doing that, and you could be top fragging, but not necessarily winning. Understand that there's way more to the game than just kills, and you're much more likely to win if you work with your team. This segues into the next question. Whether you think your teammates hold you back or not in ranked is irrelevant. If you're going to solo queue, who you get on your team is out of your control. What you are in control of is yourself and what type of impact you have on the game. This includes the impact on your teammates. It can be positive or negative, that's up to you. But it boggles my mind when people are toxic, either verbally or through text to their team, usually flaming them for a mistake or calling them bad. All that serves to do is help you lose the game quicker. What type of person would be motivated to try harder or give their best effort, you know, after receiving some shit like that? Someone is either gonna shut down for the rest of the game, you know, just stop calming, stop giving real effort, or they're gonna snap back and all of a sudden an argument starts and then those two guys are pissy at each other for the rest of the match. Your teammates are people too, and being more positive can have a bigger impact than you think, especially if you're top ragging or doing really well. Randoms and matchmaking will always be more likely to listen to someone if they're doing well individually, in my experience at least. If you have an idea, call a strat or make a suggestion. Praise teammates when they make a good play. Even just encouraging a teammate who loses a close round can help. You know, as simple as typing nice try. It goes a long way, honestly. If you're on top of the leaderboard for your team, these things, superficially at least, mean more to some, but they're good things regardless of your score. I can't tell you how many unlikely comebacks I've made in ranked because my team kept it lighthearted and positive versus when people are asking to surrender when it's only four to one and they just spend the whole game moaning. This doesn't mean that you can't criticize teammates. Constructive criticism is good, but remember that how you say something is almost as important as what you're saying. For instance, if it's a 2v1 and your teammate peeks out and dies without waiting for you to get close enough to trade, you can give them criticism on that. But the difference is by saying something like, hey man, next time wait for me so we can trade the kill versus what the fuck are you doing man don't peek next time people often do these like really subtle passive aggressive things which really get under people's skin and it's gonna add up over the course of the game and you know someone's gonna snap eventually and in general people just tend to be more responsive if you're not being an asshole all right all of that ties into the next part dealing with 
other toxic players in ranked. Like I said before, what type of players you get on your team is out of your control if you're not going to queue with others, so you have to deal with what you're dealt. Some people have a one chance type of rule where they'll give someone one chance to stop being toxic, and if they don't, they'll just mute them and move on. My advice is to call people out for that behavior, even if it's not towards you. And don't call them out in necessarily an antagonistic way, but just, you know, let the person know it's not cool to talk or act like that. Um, you never know what's going on in some people's lives. Uh, a lot of them might just be taking out their anger and frustration in game. I've seen instances of people being apologetic afterwards and sort of trying to reel back on their toxicity throughout the match. Now, of course, you're going to encounter people who don't change and may even amp up the toxicity. And in that case, you really can't do anything but mute them and move on. Some people are worried that uh, they're going to be missing out on information and calm, so they don't want to mute the person. But in reality, you're probably not missing out on much, and your experience in that match will be improved, win or lose, just by not giving the toxic person any more attention. Now, if you're constantly experiencing toxic teammates, there's really only one option for you. I know this is a particular problem if you're a girl or a younger kid with a higher pitched voice, but it really applies to everyone. The solution is just to queue with, you know, at least one, if not two other people who you enjoy playing with and have good mindset you know, etc. Um, I would say 3Q is the sweet spot because you become the lobby majority. Now, not only does this give you one or two teammates who you can trust, you know, are going to have a good mentality and not turn toxic during the game, but it's also gives you some backup. So if one of your random teammates starts being toxic, you have some people to see if they can, you know, back you up and change that person's mind and get them to really see how they're acting. But same as before, sometimes that's just the way the person is and you may still need to mute them and move on with the game. But queuing with others just reduces the amount of randoms you'll play with, so it lowers the chance that you'll get a verbally abusive teammate. So all of this talk about mentality and attitude towards the team brings me to the next point, which is how to be a better teammate. A common question is what to do when you're having a bad individual game or how to still have impact when you're not fragging. And one of the biggest things that you can do to reach that goal is becoming a better teammate. This includes everything from offering your utility to help teammates, being aware of the map and what's going on so you can rotate effectively to support you know, teammates on the other side of the map, communicating well, praising teammates when they make good plays and keeping the energy positive even when you lose rounds. It may even involve you trying to organize things and offering to go in first to allow your team to trade you if you're just losing every duel you take. Obviously, that's sort of dependent on your agent. If you're not having a sharp day individually, you should probably stop taking every aim duel and look to work with your team a bit more. Knowing your agent and their inherent role how it may synergize with your team's comp and constantly looking to support your teammates are all part of what it takes to, to be a good teammate. If you consciously work on these things, you can still have impact even when you're having a bad day individually. Bad teammates are the people who lose the first couple of aim duels of the match and then either shut down, start blaming their team, or they just continue to bang their head against the wall and just take the same fights that they keep losing over and over. Or it's a mix of all three of these things. These are often the people that complain about their team holding them back even though they don't know how to adapt themselves. If they find themselves not able to run around the map and win every fight they take solo, they become lost and all of a sudden the reason they're losing must be because of their team and not from any fault of their own. It's a flawed mindset and it will hold you back until you can look at the big picture and realize what it takes to win. Teamwork. This game is harder to run around and carry solo than in a game like CS, so if you're struggling, try to play with your team more. Even simple teamwork is good. Double peaks, context setups, pushing a site together. It's better to call and try to do something together and to lose than it is to have everyone run around doing their own thing and lose anyway. So we briefly covered this in one of the previous points, but how to not tilt. Hopefully some of the things discussed before gave you a bit of insight into this, but generally speaking, everybody is different. Some people are always calm and collected regardless of the score or what happens, and some people are just quick to rage when they lose a big round. Just understand that tilting has zero benefits. You're only going to make yourself more likely to lose or make your team care less about the match if you verbalize your frustrations in a bad way. And putting yourself in that negative mental state also puts you in a very scary place where if something tilt-worthy happens, let's say the following round or two, and you're already in that tilted zone, you're bound to implode and continue on the downward spiral. Now, it's really hard to change yourself, especially if some of this stuff is partly an involuntary reaction, if you're just really competitive, you know. One way to curb this is to simply care less. Now, I know that sounds odd, and I don't mean to not care about the game at all, but if you care less, you'll be less emotionally impacted by what happens. Even in a ranked competitive context, it's still a game and you should be trying to have fun. If you care less about winning or losing the round or the match, 
what your teammates do or say, you'll hopefully have less extreme reactions in the moment. Like I said before, keeping the team environment positive and uplifting, you know, regardless if you're winning nine to three or losing three to nine, um, has a bigger potential impact on the match than you would think. For most people that are extremely emotional, this is gonna take time. You're still gonna probably rage or feel the need to let it rip on the mic, but if you continue to make a conscious effort and be aware of these things, you'll start to catch yourself. Um, if you realized you've made a passive aggressive comment or something negative after the fact, all it takes is a quick apology and a refocus on the next round. Something like, sorry, I was just frustrated. Let's go guys, we still got this. Learning to not dwell on the previous round slash half and immediately focusing on what's ahead of you will make you a better player overall and will improve your mental game also. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean to not think about anything that happened before. You should be paying attention to how the other team is playing during the entire duration of the match and trying to adapt around it. This is just more about not dwelling on the negative and wasting your next freeze time, you know, nitpicking someone's mistake or complaining about what happened. This brings me to my last point. What to do if you're losing games consecutively, not in a good mental state, tilted, etc. Some people can grind their way through the tilt until they finally get a win and, you know, get some positive mental back, but most people can't. Like I've said before, let's say you've already lost two games and you know yourself that you're tilted, but you continue to queue. You're setting yourself up for potential failure. If you get bad teammates, toxic teammates, or maybe the match starts out poorly for you and it's, you know, it's only going to compound on top of you already being tilted and almost nobody's going to play better in that state. My only advice here is to take a break and step back a bit. It could be for a couple of hours, it could be for a day, but if you feel like you're in that type of mental state or perhaps in a rut, taking a break can help more than you would think. You can play some other less competitive games, you know, less stressful games, or even just get off the PC if you want. But letting your mental reset and coming back to the game a couple hours or a day later can have a big impact, not only on your performance, but on how you react and interact with your own teammates. All right, to recap, Pick two or three agents to learn and get them to a competent level of play. Pick agents based on your own comfort and also what agent you think would synergize with your own play style. Understand the role of your agent within the team. Next, kills and KD are not the be all end all for winning a game or for being a good player. If you want to have a higher chance of winning, change how you interact with your team. Learn to be a positive, encouraging force that your teammates can rely on regardless of the round outcome. Complement good plays. Encourage them when they misplay or lose a clutch. Overall, keep the team environment more positive and loose, and you'll see better results from your teammates at least. If you're top fragging, rather than using that as an excuse to flame the rest of your team, use it to help motivate your squad or make suggestions for the game plan. And remember, criticism is fine, but pay attention to how you deliver the criticism. Next, try to get toxic players to see the error in their ways, and if they refuse, mute them for your own sake and continue the game without them killing your mood or killing your vibe. If this is a constant experience for you and it's ruining, you know, your time in Valorant, then maybe look to queue with at least one or two friends regularly. Focus on becoming a better teammate and you'll win more games. And not only that, you'll be able to have impact even in games when you're not feeling it individually. Simple teamwork is fine. As I said before, it's better to make a plan and lose doing it than to have everyone do random things and lose anyway. Next, understand that tilting has zero benefits and an easy way to start to tame your emotional responses is to try to care less, about the outcome at least keep a positive mental state, and take it one round at a time. And lastly, if you find yourself starting to tilt after a couple of bad games or consecutive losses, don't be afraid to take a break. An hour a day. And lastly, if you find yourself starting to tilt after a couple of bad games or consecutive losses, don't be afraid to take a break. An hour or a day, whatever you think you need, but you'll find that resetting your mental before continuing to play can have a positive impact overall. All right, that's it. I know this video covered a lot of broad mental concepts and less specific in-game things, but it's a really important aspect of the game that is largely ignored. You know, people like to focus on the practical, easily observable things, you know, like aim and mechanics and ability usage, but the mental aspect is just as important. Changing your perspective and reassessing how you view the game, your team, and yourself going into ranked can make a big difference. Stop being so results oriented and focus more on the process of improving instead. Take it one round at a time Time, and then one game at a time. I think if you try to employ some of the concepts that I talked about, not only will you have a more enjoyable and positive experience overall, win or lose, but I think for many, you'll find more consistent success as well. Good luck on the ranked climb, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.